Gaudi Day. It's my privilege to introduce and welcome our chief guest for the day, Sri K. Pratapachandran, retired assistant general manager of KFC. Sri Pratapachandran is currently the director of Child Empowerment Trust and he is also the consultant at Samad Hospital, Trivandrum. A word about his career. Sir had rendered 39 years of distinguished administrative service under the purview of KFC Board of Directors. He has also served as guest faculty in management subjects at IMG, various engineering colleges, ITI, and several non-governmental organizations in Kerala. Though Sri K. Pratapachandran is an engineer by profession, he is passionate about counseling, continuing education for adults, and even literature. It's worth mentioning the fact that he has also served as an assistant editor in KFC News Letter, John JC's Bulletin, and various other documentaries to name a few. Sri Prasapachandran is an active member of seven social service organizations. To name a few, Indian Society for Training and Development, Indian Adult Education Association, NSS, and quite a other few. So that's a brief sketch of our chief guest. Sir, we are very glad to have you here with us today. And on behalf of the management, members of the staff, students, and on my own behalf, I extend to Sir a very warm welcome. Next, I would like to welcome our secretary and senior principal, Sri Purushottaman Sir, whose timely advice and emotional support has helped us move ahead. Sir, on behalf of all of us present here, I extend to you a very warm welcome. A very warm welcome to all the parents who have gathered here and who are anxiously waiting to see the awards perform on stage. A very warm welcome to the parents. And finally, I would like to welcome all the teachers, non-teaching staff and my dear students for braving the rain and sitting here to watch the program. Welcome once again. Now, we kindly request the chief guest to address the audience. Thank you all for a warm welcome. Respected Vishwadhan sir, the headmistress here, and the parents, the teachers, and all my young friends. First of all, let me apologize to you. I am about 15 minutes late. It's purely because of my own uh, planning rationale. Because I get along on a two-wheeler and I think, I, to, to, I thought it would take me only about 10 to 15 minutes to reach this place, but unfortunately the roads are what they are. And so, I will a little delay. I am sorry for that. I apologize to all of you. Next is, I thank the school and all the authorities here for giving, giving me this opportunity to come and talk to you. The opening speaker said, today is a very good day for you all because the kids day. Well, I too accept that. I have been working with children for the last 40 years in various capacities. When I say children, there are people of different age groups. University today, a child is somebody who has not reached the age of 18, though some of the experts may differ with me. And as you all know, childhood is one moment of life which you all should enjoy. So, Let's see what we can do about it. What does a child need? The question is that. What does a child need and when does he need that? So starting with children, we have children when they are just born. Maybe up to 30 days, neonatal children. They need a lot of support. Then we have children up to the age of two. When they are just exploring the world. Then we have children on to up to the age of five. So you may ask me why is five so important? We all know we are an entity with a body, a mind and spirit. 
and out of the body, the mind as well as the heart or the emotions come from the brain and the brain grows only up to the age of five. So whatever input we have to give a child, we have to give them before the age of five till the brain grows. So after that, then there is another period that is up to the ten years, the very present time when children can be very carefree. Then begins the teens, maybe sometimes 10, between 10 and 12, it goes on up to 18 or 19, some, for some people it goes even extends up to 22. So teenage, and there's a lot of confusion, a lot of body growth is there and all. But we know today, these days are very difficult times. We have a lot of pressure on us and the pressure most of the time are transferred by the parents and the teachers onto the children. I am not exception. I have two daughters, two of them, both of them have now grown up and both of them are professionally qualified. But I know the difficulty in bringing up them. There were other children also in my family, a lot of other children were there. Even one of my nephews was so student when he was in the Sahiri school. He has now grown up and taken up a big position. But what can we do for the children today? Children are exposed to a lot of risk today. The risk can come from anywhere. The risk can come from people the child knows. It can come from the environment. It can come from other places. So what can we do with the, the child? They say in Sanskrit that Savitya Ya Vimojite You should give the child an education that will permit him to come out of ignorance that will empower him, remove that will liberate him so that's what we have to do and for that I think we have to be the children on their own but at the same time we also see that we have to control them but today a lot of people talk about child rights from 1989 the convention of child has been talking about child rights there are opponents to this also some people they say that children don't need rights. They say children need only protection. Yes, children definitely need protection. So one of the fundamental things in child rights is you have to give the child protection. Now what is the protection that you have to give the child? You have to help the child to physically grow. You have to help the child to emotionally grow. You have to help the child to be socially adjustable. You have to help the child to face a lot of competitions. The world is going into a global arena. So there are a lot of competitions. He must also help the child to be himself or herself and to enjoy the moments of life. And some total in the end, he has to have a good employment which will generate or sustain him or her. So if you look at child rights, it is one thing is you have to protect the child so the protection should definitely come from parents school authorities and society in general but what do we see today today we see a lot of the society which is supposed to protect the child itself is a threat for them so protection let's all see that we can protect them Second one is, we must empower them. How do you empower them? You teach them, give them some knowledge. But ultimately, what does all the learning lead to? I think some of my young friends are too young to understand what learning has to do for them. But for the older children, I would say, learning should lead you to thinking. You should start thinking. And there are two types of thinking which you need. You have to develop critical thinking as well as creative thinking. And from your thinking 
should come knowledge. Knowledge which is going to be useful to the society. Knowledge which is going to change the society. Knowledge which is going to help the society face the growth and development. And then the child should be empowered. And last of all, you should help the child to be at peace with himself or herself. So all these things are what the Convention of Child Rights is. But at the same time, the child or the parent both have responsibility. The child has his own responsibilities. The parents have their own responsibilities. The teachers have their own responsibilities. And society at large has responsibilities. But many a time we find that we are in a competitive world and we are trying to press our children to something which we were not able to achieve. So definitely let's all think and do that. And this is a nice day, kids day. Well, I am told there are a lot of activities here. Lot of activities which you will all participate. And with your permission, I will now officially declare this program inaugurated. Because I am called here to be the chief guest to inaugurate this program. And my thank you. So now I come. Now I was talking to the parents and the older children among you and the teachers. Now let's come back to our young friends here in the front. Hmm? Shall we have a song? A small song. Hmm? Okay, then why don't you all stand up? Yes, stand up there. Okay. Now how many of you have seen a train? Yeah, all of you have seen trains. Hmm? Okay, lower, lower your hands, lower your hands. So all of you have seen trains. Hmm? And you know how much load a train when it is going up the hill is pulling. Do you know that? Hmm? Some 29, 30 bogies are pulled up the hill when the train goes up the hill. How does the train go? Hmm? How does the train go? Yeah, it goes with the engine and the engine goes out. Isn't it? It pulls. Okay. Now everything in life has a language. Okay, we were listening to the train language. So when I was young, about your age, sit down, sit down, sit down, please. All of you sit down. <laughs> when I was your age, that is in the first standard, second standard, hmm, I was told that the train sings a song. Hmm, and they told me the song was in Malayalam. I hope all of you understand Malayalam. Anybody not knowing Malayalam? Yeah, all of, okay. Anyway, this is a small song. Okay? And uh, that song was related at that time to your place in the school. This place is called Karakota. Hmm? Yeah, I was told by somebody that the train is singing. And they said the train goes, the song goes like this. Karakota, Palliporam, Karakim, and Dalitelu. The train was getting tired and somebody has to push the train upwards. So I kept it in mind. I was keeping saying, it says, chuk 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 So they said, translate in Malayalam. Karakota, Palliporam, Karakim, and Dalitelu. So I remember Karakota always from that song. Hmm? Long by. The standard. I learned that song. Then I went on. I told you, you know, I was working with children all. A lot of times I was working with different children. And one day I wanted to know how children could be motivated. Then somebody, one of my teachers said, Hey, hey, that's very simple. I said, How, sir? Very simple to motivate children. I said, How? Okay, you go and tell them about the train. So that's what I am telling you now. I am telling you about the train. Hmm? You tell them about the train's language, the train's song. So I said, What, sir? What is that song? So he said, you recite with me. Now you will all recite with me. Okay. Let's start then. Hmm? I think. Tell aloud. I can. I think. I can. Okay, now let's raise the tempo. I think I can. I can, I can. I think I can. I can, I can. Do you see the train running? Okay, come. Fast. I think I can. I can, I can. I think I can. I can, I can. Okay. This is a song for you for growth. Hmm? Whenever you get time, whenever you feel tired, whenever you are unhappy, just tell yourself, put your hand on your chest and tell yourself, I think I can, I can, I can, I think I can, I can, I can. And as the train pulls the load up the hill, we will pull our life to a very good end. I wish all of you a good day. I hope later on I'll meet you in life in different places as great people.
wonderful day coming here, talking to you, interacting with you. So, as we all say, you have a lot of programs done, eight programs have to be done. We have to see all that, how much creativity is coming out of you, we have to watch that. So, I will not take much of your time. Once again, I thank Alan Feldman School for inviting me here for this program. I, um, I thank all of you sitting here and applauding whatever small things I have been saying. Thank you. Now I pray to Almighty to give you all strength to do and become what you want to be. Thank you. Thank you very much for a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now we move on to the variety entertainments.